This is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. There's someone down here. And this is Hogwarts there. Legacy. Is someone there? Is that you, Peeves? Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Ben Snow and today I'm going to compare the old Harry Potter game to Hogwarts Legacy. And you might be asking, why in the world would I compare a game from 2001 to this AAA open world RPG? Well see, I just played over 10 hours of Hogwarts Legacy. And by the way, thank you Warner Brothers for giving me the early access code for the game. And even though this was a brand new castle, this was a brand new story that I was experiencing, I found myself feeling nostalgic. And I first thought that that was just me, you know, because of being in the castle, being in sort of familiar place. But then I realized that in the same way how the developers wanted to represent the books and the movies, they also chose to acknowledge the games as well. So let's take a look at five of these different elements that were brought from the old Harry Potter games. We all are very familiar with the way we used to learn spells in the Philosopher's Stone or Chamber of Secrets, right? There would be like a shape floating in the air and we would have to, you know, follow it with our mouse. And in Hogwarts Legacy, it is the exact same way how we learn the spell. Look at it, it's just the same shape and we navigate the arrow while also hitting a couple of buttons. <laughs> this is incredible. I'm sure there were so many different ways how you can, you know, make, build a mechanic around learning the spells, but they chose to do this familiar and kind of funny way. But don't worry, you don't have to go complete a list of impossible tasks uh, in the death chamber like in the old Harry Potter games, but the professor would still give you a couple of assignments before learning a spell. Number two. So every time you would uncover a hidden room or open a chest, you would of course get the beans, but don't worry, the beans are, I haven't seen any beans in this game, but that sound that you would hear in the old Harry Potter games is here as well. Every time you pick up the field guide page, it gives this little chime and this, the way I describe that sound is very magical, Rebellion. but haunting at the same time. I love it, it is very specific, and it makes your discovery really special. At number three, we have Flipendo. So, a spell that was never mentioned in the books and only derived from the video games is now in Hogwarts Legacy. This is incredible. I don't know why it makes me happy, but it's just, it's cool. It's the fact that they are nodding to all of us who played all those games. And next, we have an entire scene recreated in Hogwarts Legacy. So, you know, in the Philosopher's Stone, Harry had to go to the restricted section of the library to get some information about Nicholas Flamel, right? And that task was the most difficult of the entire game, I feel like, because you had these Terminators with night vision installed, also known as Prefects. And take a look at this. Look over there. Yep. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, so ah, you have our main character also going to the restricted section trying to find a book while trying to sneak past the prefects and then a librarian. This is incredible. It's literally that experience recreated in a brand new way. Well, only here you have Sebastian as your companion, except Ron, but you still go and get the book. I'm not gonna spoil what kind of book are you getting. You're gonna have to find that um, um, on your own, but it was pretty cool. You get in the end, you see some ghosts, you get spooked. It's a really cool scene, actually. And at number five, it's something that you can't really interact with, but it is that unique feeling. So I don't know if this is the same for you, but when I would read Harry Potter books, I would always imagine myself sneaking outside Hogwarts, having Lumos lit up and just explore, go and cover a dungeon or even wander around the corridors trying to, trying to find a chest or whatnot. And this game literally gave me that feeling, that feeling of mystery, the wonder, you know, like I found myself outside Hogwarts, I have Lumos lit up, and it's 
eerie. It is kind of spooky. I'm alone, and then I go to the side, I go to the ruins, and then I see something in water, I go grab that, and in the old Harry Potter games, that was that mystery. It was in the sound design, it was just the atmosphere was created pretty nice. But here, it is so much better because this time around, it is my experience. It is my journey. I'm the hero of the story. And that's why also this feels like I'm reading a book because this here we have an amazing story and it brings my, that curiosity. So the fact that I'm comparing these old Harry Potter games to Hogwarts Legacy is not to show how I'm not trying to cast shadow on anything here. It's more about highlighting these interesting moments that developers chose to bring and make this a very authentic experience to everyone. They saw the elements from other games that worked. They know them. Even in the challenge menu, you have the character card icons nodding to the wizard cards that you would collect in all the games. Or some statues or portraits would say similar things that would say in like Order of the Phoenix. It is fascinating to find those little things. And it shows how this game was made by fans for fans. And for now, I'm just super eager to continue playing the game and find what else has been brought from other games. If you want to check out my playthrough, here's the link right here. And don't forget to click the like button, subscribe button, and all the other buttons of that nature. I'll see you next time. Hogsmeade?